Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while and I feel like I start every single new video off with saying I know it's been a while but you know how it is these days. Uh, so I'm here today to do a tutorial on the new Necromancy Gothic Romance palette. I'm so excited about this palette. I felt really inspired to do a look. So I hope that you'll have a fun little experience creating a nice, dark, cool, smoky eye and get to see a little bit about what this new shadow palette from Necromancy Cosmetica is all about. So if you wanna see how the eyeshadows perform and how to recreate this look, there's gonna be a review at the end. Uh, you know what to do. I am going to... Ah! Okay, maybe not that one. I was going to use the Linda Holberg eye primer, but here we go. Let's use the e.l.f. eye primer. Just going to quickly pop that all over the lid. I did use this palette the other day without a primer, and oh boy, it still lasted really well with the primer. So uh, not necessary um, other than sometimes primer is just makes your eyeballs a little bit easier to blend. So I don't know gonna leave that one up to you primer or no primer let's just get on to the design of the packaging I've never seen packaging like this before I love that it's recyclable packaging as well love that companies are jumping onto this less plastic so cover like oh my gosh look at that so pretty and then you get to the actual palette and it kind of opens up like a little storybook so 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 cute there is a little teeny tiny mirror on the other side, but I mean, it's pretty small, so I'm not, probably not gonna use that. But yeah, that's the back of the palette. So a cute little illustration. And then that is the inside of the palette. Love. And then it just kind of magnetizes back up like a little accordion guy. Cute. I did a pinky look with it the other day and I absolutely loved that using these colors, but I feel like that's all I've been doing on my Instagram TVs and the last few YouTubes lately, actually. It's been a really long time since I've done a cool look. So let's, let's do a cool look. I haven't used these um, cool shades yet. Actually, I, I, like, I used it as an eyeliner with my pinky eyeball look. So this is gonna be my first time using them all over the eyeball. So you'll get to kind of learn this palette with me. I just am popping a little bit of this color Phantasma through the crease of the eye, just to kind of set that uh, creamy primer base that we already have down. My thought is I'm going to do this on the lid, this for a little bit of darkness, and then the, this through the crease to warm it up a little bit because I always, always need to warm up a cool eye. Blue eyes or greeny eyes just, for some reason, just don't look good on me. So I always warm it up and that makes me feel more comfortable with that color. I'm trying to find a little flat brush. All right, I've got this little elf brush here and then I'm going to start off with this color Melancholy, which is such, such, such a beautiful eyeliner color. I used it, like I said, with the pinky eye and it was so nice. It goes on so pigmented, I'm a little afraid. <laughs> Probably should have done my foundation after, but you know how that rolls. Hindsight, it's a glorious thing, isn't it? So I'm taking a firm, flat brush and I'm just gonna pop that all over the eye. I'm gonna flip that brush upward, upside down so I can get that a little closer to the lash line. And I'm just gonna do the other eyeball uh, flat, firm brush for this because we're trying to build and pack a dark color down. If you use a fluffy brush, or a brush that's not firm enough for this, it's just gonna fluff everywhere and you'll have a lot more fallout to deal with from this really pigmented color. It's actually not too bad for fallout. There's a little bit there, but I mean, 
it's dark. All right, so now that that's all packed on and I've got two black hole eyes, love me a black hole eye look. I'm gonna go back to that brush that I used with the creamy color. I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of that. This is the Cosette 175 brush. It's got a nice little point to it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that melancholy color, which is the color we were just using. And I'm just gonna sweep that through the crease of the eye just to start a little bit of blending. Uh, sometimes I do the warm transition color through the crease first and then I'll pack this color on. Um, I don't know, there's, I haven't really discovered which way I like better. I just flip flop between the two of them. So I guess if I recreated this exact same look again one time I would figure that out. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do it this way for now. There's no, there's no real right way to do it. So now that that's not totally blended, but no longer a harsh line, I'm going to take another, this is a clean or clean-ish 175 brush from Cosette. And then I'm going to start using this color Burial Ground. Um, so I'm gonna pop a little bit more, like a, actually a lot more product on this brush before I just had that green on the very tip, tip, tip. And now I'm going to use more of the full of the brush and kind of get a lot of product on the full of the brush because I'm going to shove that into the socket and really start blending. Obviously when you mix a warm color with a cool color, you will kind of get a muddying of those colors, but I also don't mind that sometimes. Uh, it's a look and it's a look I like so I'm pushing the tip of that brush into the socket and blending back and forth and whatever's left on the the bottom rounder part of the brush is going to just sweep up into my socket or up onto my brow bone a little bit easier just back and forth like that already liking how this is looking so you can see a little bit of the color that i packed on my lid has kind of come off um it's not underneath my eyes as fallout so probably just on my brush but that is one reason why you could do this warm color transition first and then do the green over the top of it i feel like either way you will have to go back to that lid color and pack it on a little more aggressively after you're done, completely done with all of the blending. Essentially, we're just blending using a lot of that warm color burial ground until we're happy with that blend. I'm just gonna go back to the lid with that greenish color melancholy and just pack that back onto the lid again. This is such a pretty color. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. It's just kind of a bit of a game of back and forth, blending those colors into each other. I'm using a really like soft touch blend when I'm doing this, just to make sure that there's no harsh lines. So for underneath the eye, I'm gonna take this tiny little Cosette brush S185 and that color Burial Ground. I'm gonna really pack that onto the brush. And then I'm going to do this the opposite way that I did my eyes. So we're gonna use the warm transition color first and then pack the darker color over the top of it. And I'm gonna really buff that in underneath the eyes for that nice dramatic under eye smoke that if you don't love an under eye smoke, leave this channel ASAP. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take this tiny little Makeup Geek small crease brush, which I really love the Makeup Geek brushes. I kind of feel like for some reason, Makeup Geek has been a forgotten about brand, but they have so many vegan products in their line. They're all labeled on the website. I love their brushes. I absolutely love their shadows as well. Uh, bring back Makeup Geek. They were like the OG for YouTube, Instagram-y makeup. So Makeup Geek small crease brush, which I'm going to use underneath the eyes. I'm going to roll that melancholy color onto that brush. 
and then I'm going to pat that over the top. That color, look at that. This is like not a super firm brush and the pigment of that, I'm just like fluffing it on my eyes and it's just there. So much pigment in this green color, so impressed. So right now it is a Thursday morning and I'm going to the salon that I work at this afternoon to do eyebrows and brow lamination and probably not makeup today because as I said there's not really much event wise happening. Um, so it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be uh, dramatic showing up at two o'clock in a very well lit area with a very smoky eye on but that's like 2019 me 2020 me has me a little more natural with makeup I don't know if it's in my old age or it's just a thing now but definitely on a day to day I think my makeup style is a little more natural these days but do love a good smoky eye. So I'm going to go back to that burial ground color and just start to swish these two together to make them have a nice little blend party underneath the eyes. If you don't have this brush yet, quit this YouTube video right now and go and buy it. Oh, and just so you know, I do have an affiliate link for this Necromancy palette. It is for 10% off and I'm gonna leave that in the description box below. So I'm just going to go back in. I found another little fluffy brush and I'm taking that burial ground color and I'm going to mix these two phantasma and burial ground for kind of like a, a lighter peachy transition. And I'm just going to sweep that on the inner corner and up underneath the brow bone just a wee bit. This little brush, you can't have it anymore. I'm sorry, it, it's an old OCC brush. RIP OCC, we love you. So I wanna try to leave a little bit of skin underneath the brow. I don't wanna take it like, you know, really up underneath my brow, but if you've got tons of lid space, go for it. And then I'm gonna take these two colors and just dust that underneath the eye so that blends nicely and doesn't have a sharp line. Tidy up the edges with this foundation brush that's got a little bit of foundation on it. You can do, do it with a brush or your beauty blender. I don't want to leave you guys with just only using three colors from here. So I am going to take, there's a little mitten right here that I'm going to use to clean my brush off on. Don't judge. And then I'm going to use this color Penumbra. Penumbra, Penubra, yeah, that one. And I'm just going to darken this up a little bit, just when you thought you couldn't get your smoky eye any darker, you always can. So because I'm building color, I'm using this brush and I'm patting it into the eye rather than sweeping it because we don't we're not really blending right now we're we're building color so always use that packing pressing technique softly creating a little more of a cat eye with that and then i'm just going to go back i'm not going to put any product on that brush and i'm just going to softly blend that with that tiny little crozette fluff brush Man, it sounds so nice outside right now. I can hear the birds chirping and there's some sunshine just peeping through my window right there. So I am gonna pop just a little bit of concealer underneath and just refresh that just a little bit. I'm gonna be careful with that concealer not to get it too close to that uh, really smoked out lower lash line that we got because we don't wanna make that a crisp lower lash line. It's just brightening underneath it a little bit because we did sweep some of that concealer away with the beauty blender before. So that is the eyeshadow look and I 
personally myself I would leave it at that but I just want to show you one more color because I feel like I'm cheating you out of the experience if I don't so why not add a little bit like these colors oh my gosh you guys do you know how tempted I was to just do my usual warm reddish plummy eye with those I still haven't used this color yet but this color is divine but I'm going to use this color here candlelight because it's gorgeous the only I think it's the only shimmery color in the palette I'm gonna pop that on the inner corner of the eye just for a little bit of a pop oh yes dude these colors are so pigmented it's crazy I love that this is called candlelight what a perfect name perfect description for what this color is and then oh if I can find a clean brush that would be perfect I would rather more of a fluffy brush but I'm going to take another one of those elf shader brushes and just make sure that that is kind of almost blending into the skin a little bit seamlessly so it's not just splodged onto the inner corner but it's more actually like blending and coming from within if your eyes just naturally created an amber candlelight glow from within <laughs> I'm such a loser oh my gosh that's that with that palette what did I use I used this color this color this color this color this color don't count on it but I'm sure I'll be back on the on the YouTubes to do something with these colors because I just cannot resist. I used this color on the lid, this color in the crease, and then this color as a liner the other day and it was so pretty. I have that look on my Instagram if you want to check it out. Anyways, I'm going to fluff some brows, put some mascara on, and then I'll meet you in a second for a little review at the end. All right, so I'm just finishing off the look with a little bit of a dewy, peachy blush. I'm absolutely obsessed with this blush this is authentic from Ofra it's a liquid blush what's it called I think it's called liquid blush well how is that green on my brush I hope that doesn't get onto the cheeks so I just pop it on the apples and then blend it in I'm kind of having more of a blush moment right now rather than a super contour moment I don't know I just I feel like blush is easier sometimes I have caught myself lately um, with too much bronzer or too much contour on and I don't want to be that person there's nothing worse than too much bronzer or too much contour it just in the daylight oh my it looks so bad I'm just buffing that in with my makeup brush I always do this with a liquid blush I kind of pop it on out of the tube brush it in with just your normal blush brush always using a padding motion and then just kind of meld it back into the skin with your foundation brush cute um skipping the highlighter i don't know i'm just like kind of done with highlighter now i like it sometimes but as i age i start to get more fine lines around that area so i'm not gonna bring them out more than i need to thank you very much uh i did <coughs> It wouldn't be a YouTube video without a little bit of Lily and Herman in the background. Hi! Hi! Pick up Herman, he'll say hi. Hi! Lily's down there, she came to visit too, but she doesn't like being picked up. So I did say I put my mascara and brows on and then come back for a review, but I forgot that I wanted to pop this color, Guilty Mood, from Linda Holberg on the inner corner of the eye. This is like the perfect dark green to match that color melancholy. Oh my gosh, my lash is flipping up already. But yeah, that just gives it the look a little bit of an extra kick with that dark green on the inside of the eyes. All of my glues are so old and crunchy because I haven't used lashes in a zillion, kazillion years. This one, this one, that's my why my lash is popping up. Right, I just popped a little bit of lash glue on and I'm gonna stick it back down, but we'll wait for it to dry a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to use these two colors. Hair is everywhere, oh my gosh, so gross. 
I'm gonna use these two colors, Healing Stone and Paper Flowers together for my lip. Um, another really nice shade from Necromancy is Divine Flesh. It's a just a good nude. Paper Flowers, Healing Stone on the center. And these lipsticks, I absolutely love these lipsticks. You've, you guys have seen me use them a zillion times before, but they are matte, but they're not really drying. So that's why I like them, especially right now for under masks, you just can't get away with a glossy or satin lipstick. Just gonna tidy up the edges with a lip brush. I'm gonna pop some Pop Plump Pout in ice to give it a little bit more of a gloss. Even though I just said don't wear gloss under your masks and I'm gonna be wearing a mask, but <laughs> you know, sometimes you just gotta do what you wanna do. Anyways, you guys, that is the final look using the Macromancy Gothic Romance palette. Hope you guys like this a little more dramatic, cool tone, smoky eye that I've done. As I've said a zillion times, I really wanted to do those like pinky, plummy, ready colors in there because that's usually my usual jam, but I upload so little these days. I didn't want to bore you with something else that I've done a zillion, zillion times before, but I really love this dark, greenish, smoky eye. I always just love that total black lid smoky eye and like I said with something a little cool I do love to warm it up in that color burial ground especially at the end when I mixed it with phantasma so let's talk about the actual eyeshadow as you know I said so many times too many times probably that it is so damn pigmented that color melancholy the first time that I used it I was like whoa it's just so easy to get a little tight angle brush and pack it along the lash line. And I like that it's like that kind of blackish greeny color. So a little bit different from then your just standard black eyeliner. These eyeshadows do remind me a little bit of the melt colors. Uh, so they're like, you know, once again, that super pigmented color. They're not as gritty as the melt ones. Sometimes I find the melt ones a little bit harder to blend. Uh, but these ones are definitely easier to blend. Uh, as a comparison of using it with a base or without, I didn't really find much of a difference in the blendability of it. And like I said, I wore it last week, actually last Thursday for the exact same work shift that I'm gonna do today for probably about seven hours and it did not budge at all. Uh, the green, I used a ton of this green underneath the eye and it didn't have any fallout. When I was using it during this tutorial though, I did have just a little bit of speckles of the green when I was patting it onto the eyelids. So if you wanna go straight up with those darker colors, you get a tiny, tiny bit of fallout, just an average amount, nothing really to bring up. So I would consider doing your foundation after you do a really dramatic smoky eye with this palette. So like I said, I do have an affiliate code for Necromancy. Uh, this is available on the eyeshadow palette, on their lipsticks, which I love. Uh, Affiliate codes are basically the lifeblood of any influencer. Obviously, I do makeup because I love it, but this is also uh, a job for me. So if you do want to, I guess, I hate saying support me because that just sounds so contrived, but you know what I mean. The affiliate code and the link for this palette is down below and I would greatly appreciate it if you love this palette and you wanna use it. I am super glad that I found a palette that I felt inspired enough to create another YouTube tutorial, YouTube tutorial, say that five times really quick, for, um, like I said, right now I'm only really creating YouTube videos when I feel super inspired. I'm not doing it on a schedule just because I have to. So I feel like, I don't know, that's, well, it's definitely better for me, but you'll get quality over quantity content, even if the quantity is very, very minimal. Uh, so yeah, stay safe you guys. Hope you're all well and I'll see you probably next year. No, just kidding. I promise I'll, I promise I'll upload another time in 2021. Bye guys.